We're at a tipping point, ladies and gentlemen. I know I've been singing praises for the show ever since it premiered, but this episode puts it over the top. I appreciate a good morsel of action from time to time, but when it gets all mystical and stuff and dives deep into the lore, I appreciate it on a whole other level. And that's what this episode does. It gets deep. Really deep. So let's get into this review of Episode 7, Kindred, and Episode 8, Crawler Commanders. It starts with Hera and Kanan commiserating on the events that led them to Lothal, and that perhaps there was a reason that they kept getting drawn to this place. As we travel far back to the beginning of this series, we know that the core of this entire series was going to revolve around Ezra, his connection to the Force, and why all these chain of events began on Lothal all those years ago. On the other side of the fence, Price and Thrawn are discussing the capture of Ezra and Sabine. However, Thrawn has other plans, enlisting the aid of an assassin, Rook. As Rook arrives, he immediately hones in on Zeb's scent and immediately sets foot to track him down. Along the way, Rook runs into Ezra and Jaikel as they engage in battle. This one is a bit tough. On one hand, you've got a professionally trained and seasoned assassin, and on the other hand, you've got the amateur Ezra. Realistically, I'd say Ezra is out of his league with this one, but he manages to escape Rook on a speeder with the help of Jaikel. Back at the ship, Kanan and Hera are back at it again with their mixed signals and playing quote unquote guess what I'm thinking. It soon turns out into an admission of defeat on both sides as they go straight in for the kiss. It's going to happen and interrupted. You know, I'm starting to think that they are destined to live a life of eternal interrupted connections. I'm inclined to point out to all of you Obi-Wan Kenobi purists out there that Kanan is reinforcing my belief that the old Jedi Code and the rules against forming attachments aren't so important in this day and age, and actually no longer apply, which creates room for my ever so popular Rey Kenobi theory. Sabine finishes up the installation of the hyperdrive, enabling Hera to finally get the intel off the ground and into the hands of Rebel Command. Before leaving, Kanan makes one final attempt to win the game of hey, are we doing this again, but is promptly interrupted by Hera. This time, the interruption led to the kiss. Finally, sheesh. That's it folks, the Jedi Code has been broken. The Force is out of balance and everything you thought you knew about the Jedi has all been a lie. Anyways, Hera lifts off and goes off to deliver the intel to Rebel Command. Now here's my favorite part. The rest of the crew is left behind to fend off the reinforcements until they spot the Lothwolves again. They follow the Lothwolves thanks to Ezra and they are led through a weird cave with paintings and drawings and when the Empire starts bombing them they are led through some type of wormhole or dimensional fold and arrive halfway across the planet. Finally with some downtime Kanan and Ezra follow the Lothwolf to a cave which bears a striking resemblance to a Jedi temple. This time the wolf says Kanan's name to him again. Doom. And Kanan responds. Apparently the wolves have a deep connection to the force and the mystery of who the wolf is still eludes me. Someone in the comments in my prior review said it could be Deepa Balaba, Kanan's master. And since the wolf seems to have some sort of connection not only to the force but to Kanan, as its only ASMR episode thus far entails whispering Doom, or Kanan's birth name, Caleb Doom, I'm inclined to agree with this sentiment. So if Balaba died at about 19 years before the Battle of Yavin, could she be communicating through the wolf via some force ghost technique? I just know the identity of the wolf has me intrigued to the nth degree. Hera delivers the intel to Mon Mothma, and we continue on to episode 8. The crews huddled in the cave they found themselves in in the previous episode with Sabine manning the radio and all communications are being jammed by the Empire and they find themselves in a vicarious situation. They happen upon an ore crawler that should be eerily familiar to all you old trilogy heads. However, they find that the crawler is equipped with an LRCA that could potentially reach Hera. Rebel Command gleans from the intel that the TIE Defender is a serious threat. Hera compels Rebel Command to order an attack on the ship factory on Lothal to prevent the Defender from being mass-produced. And of course, Command is very hesitant in ordering this mission with the presence of not only an Imperial blockade, but Admiral Thrawn as well. The crew infiltrates the ore crawler as Metal Gear Sabine takes care of exterior security. Of course, as fate would have it, they seemingly just let the pilot sound the alarms, making their current mission increasingly more difficult. Ezra makes his best attempt at mimicking the lizardly captain, although I thought he sounded just like him. Kanan finds slaves in the back of the crawler, but also runs into 
into an old friend Visago. However, they also run into a snag with the foreman. Apparently, Kanan at this very point in time is a lousy Jedi and quickly gets disarmed and loses. Zeb doesn't do any better as the Trandoshan practically gets the upper hand in almost every single situation until finally Zeb overpowers him and the Trandoshan falls to his not death. Because this is a family show, folks, not death. He falls to his not death. Back at Rebel Command, Hera paces around waiting for any sign of action as Mon Mothma comes in and says, hey, this is a very difficult situation. Hera just can't accept it, so she walks in on a closed door meeting and gives a heartfelt speech, hopefully spurring the Rebel Command to action. Reinforcements arrive at the crawler as spotted by Sabine. Ezra has a plan to run a ruse by the reinforcements as they are boarded. After they successfully fend off the stormtroopers, Sabine tries to transmit to Hera, but Captain Seavor has sabotage the communications array. Ezra is tasked with playing Rat as he has to crawl through the ventilation shafts in order to capture Captain Seavor and gain back control of communications. Ezra enters into combat with Captain Seavor and we get a reimagining of Smeagol versus Frodo with Seavor meeting his end by falling into Mount Doom. They successfully take control of the crawler as well as rescue Visago and they finally reach Hera as she has some really good news for Ezra. The Rebel Alliance is launching a full-scale assault on Lothal and it's up to Ezra and the rest of the crew to coordinate the ground assault. This is going to be huge. Like, huge. Like, like, bigly huge. The timing is just right and the stars have finally aligned for the Rebel Alliance to spring to action and take back Lothal. And I can't wait for that to happen. As Kanan said, all paths are coming together. And we are this much closer to connecting the universe. The only thing left for them to do now is to find out about the Death Star and for the Rogue One team to make an appearance on Rebels and set that narrative into play. Surprisingly, for a doubleheader that didn't quite have much in terms of connective tissue to the overarching narrative of the larger Star Wars universe, it certainly had a lot of appeal, allure, and intrigue. With just subtle hints at the behind the scenes with the Loth Wolves and the possibility of Kanan or Caleb reuniting with his master Balaba, the series is headed for a graceful and very fulfilling end. What did you guys think of the episode? Who do you think the Loth Wolf is? Let me know in the comments section below. Leave a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you can be here for when all this stuff goes down for the series finale as well as Star Wars The Last Jedi. I'm Element. We are one with the Force and the Force is with us.